Welcome to Wine Soundtrack South Africa. Listen to the passion with which producers narrate their winery and their world. In 30 Answers, discover their stories, personalities and passions. Hello friends and listeners of Wine Soundtrack. This is Morena Kaler and today I'm sitting with Kiara Scott from Brookdale Wine Estate in Paul. Welcome Kiara. Can you tell me a bit more about yourself? Thank you Morena. Hello. Uh, yeah, my name is Kiara Scott and I'm the winemaker at Brookdale Estate in Paul. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Where did you grow up? Where are you from here from the Western Cape and how did you get into the wine industry? Uh, yes, so I am originally from the Western Cape, Cape Town, which was plain to be exact. Um, and my curiosity in wine peaked when I was fairly young. Um, I don't have a very romantic story when it comes to how I got into the wine industry. Uh, but um, I saw in Mitchell's Plain, you know, there's a lot of socioeconomic challenges and there's alcohol abuse and that had me very curious about wine, why people were drinking it, what about this prop what about this product? It's is so wonderful to people. Um, you know that they keep just going back to it despite sometimes the negative connotations attached to it. Um, and that led me to learn about wine. Yeah, that got the curiosity peaked and then I went into winemaking, studied at Alsenburg uh, joined the Cape Wine Skill Protégé program where I worked with three amazing winemakers uh, and then went on to become the assistant winemaker at Savage Wines and then now after two years moved on to be the winemaker at Brookdale Estate in Paul which is where I am now. <laughs> And Brookdale is a fairly young, newly established farm. Tell me about it. Uh, how many uh, hectares of, of land are you farming under vine at the moment? Yeah, wh what's the story? So Brookdale was originally purchased in 2015 by Englishman Tim Rudd. And at that time, the farm was quite dilapidated. Um, there were vines, but it was so overgrown that you couldn't even tell that there were vines. Uh, there were virus as well, and they were just you know poorly taken care of. Um, and all of the vines except for two hectares of Chine and Blanc um, was uprooted and we've got at the moment we're about 67 hectares that's the total estate and we are still planting so when you you ask me this question again in a year's time the answer will be different but we're about 21 hectares under vine at the moment um, and we're still planting <laughs> yeah and tell me uh, what is your current level of production in terms of cases Mm. Give me a moment. In terms of cases, because we're growing every year, we're growing year on year. So this year it's going to be slightly different. Uh, da da da. D -d -d. Fifteen thousand cases. That's a nice amount. <laughs> That's a very nice amount. And tell me a little bit about the wine that you're making there. Uh, what what varieties are you working with and uh, what does the future hold? So at the moment we've got five wines. We've got a Brookdale Chenin Blanc which is our flagship made from Old Vine Chenin and we've just joined the Old Vine project which is very exciting. Um, and then we've got our 16 varietal white field blend that has also just been released. So it's 16 different varieties interplanted in one block which is quite exciting and daunting when it comes to harvest time of course <laughs> and then we've got our Mason Road range which is a Chenin Blanc, a Rosé made of Syrah, Grenache and Cinso and then our Mason Road Syrah and that's what we've got that's the wines that we're making at the moment but we've planted with varieties from the south of France and from Portugal so we've got Marasan, Roussan, Grenache Blanc, um, Grenache Noir, we've got uh, Petit Syrah, We've got more plantings of Chenin and Cinso, we've got Mouvert, we've got Pig Bull, um, and the list goes on. <laughs> That's pretty exciting actually, you know, and it's, it's, it's really fun to be part of such a project from the start where you can make your mark and you can kind of play a little bit in terms of, of where you're going. You're not just walking onto something that's established and yes. this is what you've got to work with and, and, and now you're carrying on. So I'm sure it's been a really, really fun project for you to be involved in as well. Oh, it's definitely been a lot of fun. Um, 
You know, the, the motto or the slogan at Brookville is stay curious and on an estate like that, you definitely can play with so many different things. Like every year we're doing a little experiment to see, um, you know, what's going to happen, uh, what can we do with what we've got. Uh, we've now just recently been making a little bit of MCC just as a, you know, as I say, research and development. <laughs> and it's really cool to be able to do fun little projects like that. It is great, and it's great to have the support as well yes. to be able to do that. And you're not you're not tied in and handcuffed. Tell me, what is the most memorable wine you've ever drank? Does is there a wine that really stands out for you that you kind of went, oh my word, this is amazing? Oh, that's so funny that you're saying that because I was I went to a tasting last night. We were tasting um, San San Giovese Chianti Classico. Um, at Wine Cellar and it was an absolutely amazing experience for me. Uh, the wines were just beautiful, they had this energy and, and last night when I got home I thought, yeah, what is the most... Uh, this, this exact question I asked myself yesterday, <laughs> last night funny enough. Um, and I worked in Sancerre and I visited this, visited this biodynamic producer and now I just need to remember his name. I keep thinking it's, oh no, now my French. I'm just going to give myself away now <laughs> with my terrible French. Don't it wasn't Vac, 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 Vacheron, Vacheron? I don't know if I'm saying it right. Um, but it was Sauvignon Blanc, but it's just the wine had this, this electricity. You know, it was just, it like jumped out of the glass it wasn't like you know it wasn't super aromatic or anything but once when you had it in your mouth it was just like oh my word like there's probably an angel crying (laughs) 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 you know or something like that a little angel playing a a violin crying shedding a tear this is like really amazing (laughs) yeah very cool I've, i've had those kinds of experiences where you just suddenly it's like a goosebumps all yes. over your body moment and it's yes. it's quite something to to experience um how much uh is the what what is the cost of the most expensive bottle of brookdale wine the retail of 300 300 rands <laughs> so not that expensive no. but there's scope to move yes. and and go in the right direction uh in terms of premiumizing and which of your wines in your cellar right now is giving you the most satisfaction that you just go wow this is just it's just worked and it just pops and it just kind of makes you a little bit excited we've got a young block of petit Syrah and this year first crop i think that wine is looking fabulous really i think it's looking so good sadly we don't have large volumes because it is first crop but that being said, there's huge potential, um, and I'm so excited about that wine. That is excited. I and mean, here in South Africa, we don't have a lot of Petit Syrah or Durif. Yes. And um, I, I am starting to hear more and more of uh, Petit plantings, which is very exciting. I was at another winery just yesterday, mm. and they said they were um, they were planting Petit Syrah, which uh, it's great. I think it's an interesting variety, um, and uh, you know it'll be interesting to see whether we uh, only see those in blends or whether we'll get a straight varietal wine from those Petits in future. But uh, interesting times. So. Uh, do you believe in the perfect variety? <gasps> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very, very simple, very straightforward. No, no. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I should rethink that. Um, the perfect variety. No. Maybe, maybe Shannon. The perfect variety. And you can have, there's so many faces, Shannon has so many faces. Um, you know, you can make it lean and austere, you can make it fuller, more concentrated, bigger body. Um, and if you blend that components together, then you have like a, a really beautiful wine. Um, but then the some of your blanc lovers is going to say some of your blanc is the perfect mm-hmm. variety. But anyway, I think, I think, it, yeah, maybe Shannon. 
Fair enough. And we do them so well here in South Africa, so why not? Tell me, do you have um, an opinion on wine critics, wine scoring, wine competitions? Is that something that, you know, you, you think holds value or... Where 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 do you position yourself? <laughs> She's showing me no, <laughs> not that one. <laughs> I've got a, I've got a very strong opinion about that that I'm not going to share on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Very cool. All right. So getting down to wine. As a consumer, mm. what do you prefer? Mm. I prefer white wines. Mm. I feel like in South Africa, white wines are better or it's a lot stronger um, than the reds Mm -hmm. so I prefer to drink white Mm -hmm. and still sparkling where where do you sit oh now I've got her thinking (sighs) Mm, I'm going to go with still okay Mm. I do enjoy sparkling I really do but still yeah I think sparkling has a place yes at an occasion yes for me i don't think i'll just open a sparkling wine just you know to get over a a, a tough day in the office Mm -hmm. um but it definitely has its place in time it does yeah okay have you ever paired white wine with red meat or vice versa do you believe that there's like a recipe yes Yes, yes, yes. I actually, one of our wines, <clears throat> the Brookdale 2018, it was really like a snapshot of the vintage. It was big and bold because, you know, we had smaller berries, we were just coming out, or, or we were actually still in a drought. So the wine came out quite, you know, big. Mm. And I actually think that that white wine in particular could pay well with red meat. So yes, we need to stop thinking maybe in the box or this works only with that, you know, uh, white wine with white meat. No, I think white wine can go with red meat too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Agreed, completely. (laughs) Chiara, I'm being presumptive, but let's just say you might have had a little bit too much wine the night before. Yeah, I'm sure you might have been yes. there once or twice. Last Just week. once. No, <laughs> last week. <laughs> last week. <laughs> so do you have a good hangover cure that you can share with our <laughs> listeners? That's something that works for you because I think everyone's forever looking for like, oh, my word, at that point in time, how do I get over this? Um, <laughs> I used to have the green ambulance is what they call it. So it's a spa liter, the green spa liter. Or just have a good breakfast. Mm. Have a good breakfast. Like last week, I had I found myself in this situation. I had too much fun, um, but I don't regret it. And I had shuk shuka. Shuk shuka. So it's like this tomatoy. It's like a curry tomato curry. Okay. Yes. I'll show you a picture. Like that. And then it's got you crack the egg on top, oh, and yes. then you put it in the oven. Yeah, so that was delicious with some like ciabatta or liquor bread. Um, alternatively, for those of you that know, have a Gatsby. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to have to educate our listeners on what a Gatsby is from uh, those who aren't South African based. What is a Gatsby? <laughs> it's the best thing. It's also the most unhealthy thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good for your soul, so that's fine. Um, so Gatsby is like a big baguette. Yes, like a really big baguette with deep fried chips. Sometimes you can fool yourself by having lots of sliced lettuce on there as well. That works. A little bit of tomato, just for to have some vegetable. Yes. <laughs> color. yes, and some color. And then you can have steak on there, or you can have... Uh, you get like a bologna or Vienna Gatsby and if you have a full house Gatsby you can have egg on there and cheese oh on the sandwich with nice sauce and it's always a sauce that you that someone makes up in the back of this <laughs> of the establishment um, or of the restaurant yeah um, like their own little secret sauce 
and it's just like it's so good and you have to eat it with your hands you must, it's eat, like you must eat it with your hands uh, a knife and fork will not do mm. no so it's not ex just not acceptable no <laughs> There you go. So next time you find yourself in South Africa, on your to-do list yes. is have a traditional Gatsby. <laughs> All right. Um, what would you say a non-drinker would lose out by not being able to enjoy your wine? Uh, just an awesome experience. <laughs> um, I think, oh, what a question actually. Uh, you know, wine is a hedonistic product. It's a pleasure, it gives you pleasure, right? Um, and I always advocate for responsible drinking, always, always, always responsible drinking. But, um, you know, there's something about wine that you're just not going to find in a can of Coke. Mm. You're not going to find it in, a, in sparkling water or even in a, in a cocktail because wine evolves. So when you open that, when you open the bottle and you have, you pour yourself a glass of wine, you have that first sip, it's going to be different gently to when you're in the middle of the bottle with friends and when you're at the end of the bottle, you're going to see evolution and something that's alive. It changes. Um, and you just don't find that with other beverages. You don't find it with a beer. You don't find it with vodka. No, <laughs> I don't drink vodka, um, or even rum that I'm aware of. Mm. But yeah, wine is something special. It's really, it's different. It's alive, mm -hmm. and you'd be missing out on that experience, being able to see the different nuances um, yeah, of wine. It's so true, you know. It, it really is something that that makes you ponder mm. life. Yes, yeah. especially a really good wine. So Brookdale is this beautiful estate set, situated kind of on the foot, foot of the mountains and it's got, it's got a helipad, you can land your helicopter. But this time, a UFO lands with aliens. <laughs> and these aliens are thirsty. <laughs> what are you going to pour for them? I'll pour them rosé. <laughs> <laughs> Why rosé? I just think I rose is drinking really well now. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, but I thought, you know, if they were, it's just because of the color probably. Maybe they'd be purple aliens and I could pull them pink rose and it'd be really funny to watch. <laughs> See if it matches their skin tone, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any good luck rituals that you kind of bring in when you're harvesting something funny like that? Uh. No, I just, no, I'm a Christian, so I pray, and, and that's good for me. And do you speak to your vines or yes. your wines when they're yes. in barrel? Yes, it's very important. It's very important, yes. And what do you say to them? Um, I say to them, if they're stuck, which some of them are right now, they're still fermenting, please finish your ferment. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> please, please don't do this to me. <laughs> Get that now. It's time. Harvest is long over. Why are you still fermenting? Or why have you stopped? Come on, you can do this. You just give them love. If you talk to them, it's like talking to plants. And then they grow. They grow better. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, I do, I do speak to them. Mm -hmm. And some people read tea leaves in the cup to tell the future. If you could read the bottom, that's old red wine sediment you could read the sediment that's stuck in a red wine glass what would you like it to reveal um, oh, that's a very interesting question if I could read the sediment at the bottom of the barrel what would I like it to say we're happy we're healthy this is awesome wine <laughs> what a super quick answer when you were little what did you want to be? Uh, when I was little, I wanted to be a musician or a lawyer. Mm. Do you play musical instruments? I do. Used to actually. Not so much anymore. Um, I played the piano and the silver flute. Hmm. 
Mm. Don't lose it. <laughs> so it's amazing. It's uh, music is such a wonderful thing. And tell me, when you're not working, how do you spend your free time? I know you're a busy lady at the moment. Tell us more. At the moment, I'm spending a lot of time with my baba. Oh, my word. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can jump out of my skin. <laughs> really. I spend time with my, yeah, with my baby and my husband and my dog. And we just, we just love each other. <laughs> So special. Oh, wonderful. Um, and do you do any sports or any physical activity, that kind of thing? Hiking? I was going to say being a winemaker is a physical activity. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Working in the cellar is a physical activity of being in the vineyards. Um, I do like to hike. We stay on a lovely, a beautiful farm. So we're walking a lot of the time. You know, going up the mountain and so on, which is lovely. Um, yeah, that's it. Maybe I do like gym at home. That's, you know. When you get your life back again, in 18 years when she's left home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and tell me, music, do you have any, like, favorite singers or music groups that you really enjoy? What's your, what, what genre are you into? Uh, yeah, I like different kinds of music. I'm all over. I'm all over, over. I like to listen to classical music. Then I like to listen to... You know, like like uh, house music. Mm -hmm. You know, I like that. I like to listen to salsa and yeah, Spanish music. Lovely. Yeah, I find that they, you know, they they carry so much emotion in their in their voices or when they sing. It's actually quite, it's beautiful. <laughs> um, and then I listen to Christian songs as well, to gospel music. Um, yeah, I'm like I'm. All over the place, a little bit of pop as well, a little bit of reggae, depending on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> yes. Um, nice. Yeah, that's my my mix. Your your it's it's nice to have a diverse mix, and um, I totally get you on the Spanish music. I have a thing for the Spanish guitar. Yeah. Oh, I think it is just to die for Spanish guitar, and especially if the player is. Yes. Soft on the eye, let's Ooh, say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that doesn't. <laughs> it helps. <laughs> Always. You know. Tell me, uh, movies. Do you have any all-time favorite movies that you just like? Oh, I've had a tough, tough week, and I just want to curl up on the sofa and watch this because it's gonna just make me feel happy. Or I'm like a typical girl now, but I like rom-coms. No? Oh, I'm a sucker for romance. <laughs> Why not? It's just, you know, it's what makes the world go round, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> and sports? Do you support any sports teams? Do you, are you into sport? No, not really. No, not really, no. <laughs> There's enough sports in a cellar. Yes. <laughs> Tell me, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, that's so hard. Um, it would... <gasps> Yeah. Or even we can turn it around and say, what What do you think is the best piece of advice you would give to someone? Um, sure. My grandmother, she said to me a couple of things. See if I can say three things, mm. because I feel like they're very, they, you know, equally important. Um, you must respect everyone, right? You never know when you're going to need people. And you need to be able to put your feet under anyone's table. Right, so that, you have to be, you have to be humble, you know. And then there's no such thing as that's not my job. Yeah. If you see a piece of paper laying on the floor, you pick it up, you know. And that type of thinking is I think, or just knowing that, I think has got me very far. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's got me very far, not even career-wise, or just with people, mm -hmm. you know, to respect people. Um, and if you, if you see a need, 
and you can follow it to it. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's some good advice. I think um, I think it's just doing the right thing, yeah. whether it is towards the person next to you or just in your average day-to-day setting. Just just do the right thing. You know, as if someone's always watching you. <laughs> It sounds a bit creepy, but you'll do that, I think. If you know someone's watching, you won't do bad stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God, you've got me thinking now. (laughs) I love it. Right, Uh, really, you and and hubby have the night off from the babe, and uh, you're going out for a romantic dinner. (gasps) She says, dreaming of that. Um, What wine would you like would really set the tone for you, set the scene for this romantic evening of love. Oh my word. He likes to drink red, is a red drinker. Uh, da, 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 da. Last night I had lovely Sangiovese. I think it would be Chianti Classico. Mm. Mm. It's just the way you say it as well. It just kind of gets you, gets you in the mood for sure. Um, what would you say is the proudest achievement so far in your career for you? Oh, that's a very difficult one. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, I work at a beautiful estate and I work with wonderful people and we make wonderful wines. Um, but I think uh, the highlight or yeah something that that really for you was stood out as a a high point in your career to date and I have to qualify here you are still very young so there's a lot ahead of you but I also know that you've achieved a lot in a very short space of time. So for you, what is that? Like like a moment, almost a, like maybe a seminal moment mm. for you where you kind of went, okay, I've yeah. done well. Girl's done well. Pat yourself on the shoulder. Uh, you know, I feel, I, feel, you know, I feel like I have so much work to do still. But um, one of my stories was in a, I don't think it was in a newspaper. I'm not, I'm not sure, but someone reached out to me on Instagram. Um, also young, young girl uh, that also comes from like a similar background to me and she just said that my story just helped her so much and she actually went on to study winemaking as well Very and that for me if you can whatever we do it's not for us but it's for the people that come after us you know, or whatever I do, it's not its not for me, it's for other young women like me who's coming after me. Um, so, I think when I'm, when my story reaches someone and they feel like, I couldn't do this, but now I've seen someone who has done that, and they can dream, and they have, they can see themselves not doing the same thing, and actually do it. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. I think you have been inspirational for many people to come out of a community and 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 not have a wine background at all and say I'm going to do this and yeah. and do it well which you have. So yeah, that's that's a fact. Complete the sentence. A table without wine is like <laughs> I was going to say the desert but that's deep. <laughs> 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 a table without wine. Oh, yes. Yeah, so. Um, it's sad, man. It's sad. Um, but I'm trying to think of something better now. But uh, I like a desert. It is yes, a desert. Dry. It's dry, dry as a desert. <laughs> um, what sort of wines do you think will be drunk in two thousand years time? Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, blends. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wine style. Um, I th- yeah, I think blends. Uh, do 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 do. 
you think the scenery will change, the landscape of wine, how the winemaking style, how do you think it's going to evolve? I mean, 2,000 years, if we think 2,000 years ago, um, and, and where we are today, evolution, growth, development, climate change. The climate change, definitely. You know, with me, the glass is always half full. Um, so hopefully things are going to get better. We'll become responsible human beings and just do what's right for the environment um, and for ourselves uh, as people. But, you know, wine goes through phases. Uh, you know, first we used to enjoy big, bold, fuller, richer Chardonnays. Now we've gone to lean, austere, less oak, um, more, yeah, less oak, amphora, concrete. So we'll probably do a switch up again and we'll do battles again and have bigger wines. And then at the end we'll just decide, you know, we'll just do less. Um, and just go back to the way it was in the beginning. <laughs> uh, do less and you know keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably be drinking really wonderful, elegant wines in 2000 years time. That'll be cool. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine being in a time machine and just going forward to see actually how things have changed in 2000 years? That's just me thinking out loud. Um, you... <laughs> Yeah, if you think, because now we're drinking wine in a can, there's, you know, we're doing so many different things with packaging in wine. So the packaging is also going to be strange, mm -hmm. you know. We'll have little, but I think they have this already, there'll be like a little wine glass with a foil um, seal at the top and you can take it off, you seal and drink your wine just like that out of the glass. Won't be bottles anymore. No. Maybe. Maybe. It's interesting what's happening and how things are changing so fast right now. So um, who knows what the, what, the, what the picture will be like in 2,000 years' time if our dear Earth is still no. spinning. You know, who knows? Right. Tell me, do um, you find yourself on a ship and the ship is sinking and you can take three wines quickly. It's got all the wines of the world on the ship and you can just take three to put in your backpack, backpack and swim to the deserted island that you spotted in the distance. What three wines are those? No, we're getting a rafter and we're taking, we're loading all the wine. We are not taking three wines. We are getting the ship. We're getting what is that thing that Jack and Rose was on? We're packing the wine on that, <laughs> and we're paddling off to safety. <laughs> Three is just not doable. Three is not doable. I can carry more than that actually on my body. So <laughs> I can have three in one hand. Actually, I can have four bottles in one hand and four in the other. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Skills. That is skill, I must say. That is impressive, I think. What will those eight wines be? Oh, my word. It'll probably be I've never had. So maybe someone's listening here on the radio. <laughs> On the radio, on the podcast. <laughs> so uh, it will probably be like DRC, uh, Domain de la Romani Conti, mm -hmm. um, oh man, I need to put South African wines in there also because we've got such amazing wines here. Uh, da, 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 da. Probably be some of Eoban's wine, Eoban Sardi's wines. Um, <laughs> and then some Rhone, Syrah. Mm. I hear you on that. Mm. I hear you. I would probably add in a bottle of Petrus. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. A nice old vintage. Yeah. Mm. Okay, tell me, what is a winemaking area in the world that you really like to explore? Um, I would like to go to Italy. Mm. Italy would be great. Yeah. Who knows what the future holds? So we're not quite finished yet. We're going to play a little game. Oh, I like games. Yes. 
I'm going to pick some different wine varieties. Okay. And you are going to pair a song with that. You're going to say what song you think represents this variety okay. best. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. So we're going to go with Petit Syrah. Oh, a Jimmy Hendrix number. Uh, Petit Sira. Mm. Give me one second. Let me check on my Apple Music. I'm not going to play a song now. Maybe Purple Haze. Mm. Because it does have that purpley color. Mm. Mm. Purple haze. Some Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> and then what about? We're gonna have to throw Shannon in there. Oh, yes, sir. And she's got so many faces. Mm-hmm. Uh, why am I thinking smooth operator? <laughs> and you said it was a she, so um, yeah, smooth operator. And how about Sauvignon Blanc? Oh. Mm. Mm -mm. That would be like, Sauvignon Blanc would have to be a disco number. It would have to be, um, what's that song? Ah, 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 staying ah, alive. Ah, staying alive. <laughs> yes, so the Bee Gees. <laughs> You know what I was thinking of that when you said a disco number. It was, it was in my head. I was like doing yeah. the arm and everything. <laughs> Definitely, mm. staying alive. <laughs> Kiara, thank you so much for joining us today. It was awesome chatting to you. Would you like to remind our listeners where they can find you, uh, the URL of the farm, any information that you'd like to share about uh, where your wines can be found? Um, so if you have, if you'd like to reach out to us, you can reach out to us at info at brookdale-estate.com or you can find our URL, our URL is www.brookdale-estate.com. You can find us on Instagram, you can find us on Facebook as well under Brookdale Estate. Um, yes, and you can also find our wines in the UK, in the Netherlands, in Germany, in Sweden, um, yeah, and we'd love to find a home in the USA. So hit me up. I'm on Instagram under Kiara Scott 05. That's me. Kiara, thank you so very much for your time and for chatting us to us today. And uh, take care. All the best. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to a new episode of Wine Soundtrack South Africa. For details and updates, visit our website, winesoundtrack.com.